on this reserve. A very specific weapon is being used to combat the scourge of poaching seen in South Africa right now. Highly trained canines. The dogs in the unit outrank any officer on the ground. They all have different personalities, and each breed is trained for a different function. Diego, a pit bull, trained in apprehension. Mystique, a boer bull, used for security. Koa, a Belgian Malinois, trained in tracking. And Muska, aptly named El Diablo. So the, the canines are part of the brotherhood. The canines are operators. Um, they're part of the team. The people ask me if I had a choice between um, my firearm or a canine in the field, which one I would choose. And I would take the dog. The dogs become our eyes and our ears and our protection out there, especially when we've got no moonlight. And we're working in the dark. Um, the dogs are everything for us, so the dogs get very well looked after. They say it flows through the leads. The only way you can get um, such good abilities out of the canines is to uh, have an understanding, uh, a true bond between canine and handler. And it's through that bond that we get results. The canines are, are everything for us in, in anti-poaching. So when you bump contact with these poachers, the guys are fresh in, they're running light. The reality of trying to catch them, once you, once you see them, they usually open fire on us, is the first thing they do is engage. So with the canines being trained to react to the gunfire and being trained to uh, react to movement and smell and trained in the arts of human scent tracking, um, you can't run away from this in the bush. You can't get away from the canine. He does his 40 kilometers per hour, he's like a bullet through the bush. Hardly see him coming through the grass line. We obviously cover him like we would any of our other operators, make sure, ensure his safety in the attack. And uh, the dogs bring results. They make the captures, they hold the suspects. Um, we've never released a dog in anti-poaching and where it hasn't proven its results on what it was released for. The sun sets on the camp. Man and dog get ready for their night shift together. One team heads off into the bush to find the rhinos. They walk to their last known location, then track them. It's not easy in the dark, but getting eyes on their assets is the best way to protect them. All right, I'm over here. Then move down, so. Down that way. I think uh, we're going to head on this road, and then uh, we'll take it from there. En route, the team check the fence line for spoor, human or animal. Henning notices a fence wire has been pushed down, signalling a breach into the property. He makes a call to base camp for the quick reaction vehicle to investigate. Jacques deploys immediately. There, they've already climbed over. Whoa. He confirms it's a fresh breach. So now they know someone is in the reserve. The evening security status is bumped to high alert. Another call comes into base camp from one of the teams in the field, reporting that a car stopped and turned its lights off, and voices in the bush nearby. Oh, returning back to Auburn, over. Jacques races back to camp to collect the rest of the unit. Diego gets geared up for the evening. Now you know where you're going. Diego. Good boy. But there was a vehicle that approached the light when all the car went dead. Oh. Where is Flores? Oh. Oh. With a confirmed breach and a suspicious vehicle, they need boots and dogs on the ground as soon as possible. In the back, Diego, in the back. I've got space in front. Be safe. Front. Yes, Captain.
the QRF vehicle drops in close to the call-out location. But a successful apprehension can only happen on foot. Carl gears up. Floris searches for Spoor in the sand. Me? Uh, I've got one. Yo, we're gonna cut through. But before they can head off, a report of three gunshots inside the reserve comes over the radio. They had three gun, 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 gunshots in the, the car. I three. think the car. Okay, let's fetch the car. We're gonna go. Let's go out the gate and move into Warthog. The priority changes again. They head for the gate where the report came from. Before they catch up with the guard, there's an unknown car to inspect. To make sure nothing suspicious is going on, Carl and Diego search the boot for weapons or any other tools that may be used for poaching. They find nothing. The vehicle is clear to proceed. The guard confirms the locations of the gunshots and they get as close as is safe in the QRF vehicle. Carl, Floris and Jacques disembark and head blindly into the bush. This is where the dogs are most needed. Reliable eyes and ears in the dark. Carl pushes ahead with Diego to see if he can pick up any scent. The team set up a listening post to hear if there's anything moving around them. Floris hears something close to him. He moves in on the position. Two shots ring out from the darkness in his direction. He returns fire with the shotgun. Diego rushes in to assist in the attack. It all goes eerily quiet. The gate calls in the exchange right away. Carl and Diego flank the location where the shots came from. Flores is close behind, looking for footprints or blood. They don't find anything. The shooter is gone. And they can't set the dogs loose without a direct threat. Everyone in the field remains on high alert. An attack on the rhinos could happen at any time. These men and dogs are ready. <laughs> 